Welcome back to another episode of Gear. I'm your host, Wilson Milan, and today we're going to do something a little different. This is going to be kind of a mashup between our Behind the Short series and our Gear Review series. We're going to take a look at all of the gear that we use to shoot our short horror film, Stranded. Now, if you haven't seen the short film yet, we are going to be revealing a lot of spoilers, so be sure to check it out by visiting the link in the corner here. Just a quick heads up, everything we talk about in this video is linked in the description below, so if you want to check any of these products out for yourself, you can follow those links. Also, since this is a new format, we would love to hear your thoughts and feedback in the comments below. With all that being said, let's take a look at the gear that we use to shoot our short horror film, Stranded. We shot Stranded on a single Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K with the Metabone Speed Booster. This camera is exceptional in low light, and because we were shooting outside of an office building without any access to power, it was paramount we had a camera with good low light. Our lens of choice was the Canon 24-70 f2.8, which is my go-to run-and-gun filmmaking lens. With the Metabone Speed Booster, we have the ability to drop down to f1.8, which makes this combo even better in low light. The reason I chose zoom lenses over prime lenses is that it's really important when doing these one-day shoots that you're able to move as quickly as possible. So being able to zoom rather than swap lenses saves us a lot of time. The camera was then mounted to my custom Pocket 4K camera rig, which is built out using small rig and nicey rig parts. If you're interested in my Pocket 4K and Pocket 6K rig setup, then let me know in the comments below and I'll plan a future video for that. To power the camera, we used a 150 watt hour juice box V-mount, which powered the camera all night. At the top of the camera, we have our Hollyland Mars 300 wireless transmitter, which is submitting a wireless feed to a field world monitor. This is set up away from set, so our assistant director and script supervisor can monitor the shots and make notes from a distance. Additionally, we have a 7-inch Feelworld FW279 mounted to the top of the camera, which allows us the ability to monitor focus and composition from a bigger screen. The FW279 is a 2200 nit monitor, which is really bright for daylight shooting. Since the Pocket 4K screen is built into the back, this external monitor also gives us the ability to change the positioning of the screen when shooting in awkward angles. For the tracking shots where Liz is with Danny, we wanted her character to feel safe, so we used the Ronin S for a smooth tracking shot with the DJI focus motor attached. Once Danny leaves and her car doesn't start, we wanted her world to feel more chaotic, so this was all shot handheld. Now as a camera operator, shooting handheld for long periods of time can really take a toll on your back and shoulders. So to combat this, we used the Vivor Easy Rig, which is affordably priced at $375. This was a huge lifesaver as it distributes the weight of the camera to your hips and takes all of the strain off your shoulders, arms, and back. If you have any interest in seeing a full review on the Vivor Easy Rig, then let me know in the comments below and I'll compile some test video and do a full review on it. As I mentioned before, this was a one day shoot, so we needed to move fast and we didn't have access to power, so we needed to plan our lighting accordingly. For our key light, we used a light panels Astra bicolor with a blue gel to give it a moonlight look. For most of the shots, we had a soft box on the light to soften it and prevent harsh shadows or we were bouncing it off a reflector. We powered it with a 265 watt hour V-mount battery by Dynacore. With this setup, we were able to light the entirety of our 12 hour night shoot with just two of these bad boys. For back and kicker lights, we used portable handheld lights such as the Digital Photo YY150. These little RGB handheld lights are really useful for grabbing quick insert shots. That way we could light our shot without having to take up precious time moving our key around. These handheld lights have built-in batteries and can also be charged with portable external power banks, which makes them really convenient and easy to use on set. As for audio, our sound mixer was running two Electrosonic Wireless and a Sennheiser MKH416 to a Sound Devices 664, which is an insanely expensive combination and I don't expect any of you to be able to use this. For most of our short films, we use an Audio-Technica AT897 shotgun mic and Rode Wireless 
wireless running to a Zoom F4 field recorder. This is a much more budget friendly option for no budget filmmakers. For narrative filmmaking, I'm a big fan of using both a boom and wireless because it gives you several different sources for the production audio and then you can pick the best sounding source in post. For instance, I used a lot of boom for the dialogue and the sound effects, but for a lot of the breathing that you hear in the short film, that is all from the wireless lobs. That's going to do it for this week's episode. If you're interested in checking out any of the gear that we use to shoot Stranded, links are in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments below so we know if we should continue doing this for future short films. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe to us and drop us a like, and we'll see you next week when we go behind the scenes of Nefarious. Look at this, as big as me. <laughs>